So anytime you have tangency, you want to be very careful with projecting your geometry. You want to think about that tangency. Is it on the east or west quadrant or does it go beyond? So we had to extend that plane extends a little bit further before it becomes a cylinder. And you can kind of see that right here. The next thing that I'm going to draw with visible lines, I have a hole that is concentric with the fillet. So order of operation, which one's easier to draw? Can I locate that hole right now? Doesn't have dimensions to locate it. It's located concentric to the fillet. So I'm going to type F for fillet. Now, if you look down in my command prompt right here, it says that my radius is zero, which would make a corner. I've already got a corner. So I'm going to type R or click on this button. R, enter. It allows me to change that. And my radius is 19 and my diameter is 19. How could they both be the same? Two times the radius is the diameter. So the fillet is twice as large as the hole. So my radius is 19, and I only have one, so I don't, I'm not going to say multiple. And I'm going to click these two edges, and it made that fillet with a radius of 19, which would be a diameter of 38. Now if I go up here and select a diameter of 19, because that's what the dimension says, and I hover over this fillet, it shows me the center. And if you don't have your center object snap run, running, you can go down here and you can set that to be running at all times because we use this a lot. And that's a diameter of 19. So now that's, that's placed and I'm finished with that. Now, if that looks too big, you can come up here to your dimension. You can say, show me the diameter of this. Yep, that's 19. And if I want to see the radius, there's a radius dimension. And it puts a diameter or the radius symbol. Okay, so now that we have all these visible lines, let's draw this side view. I'm going to start once again with the bottom plate in the lower right-hand corner. And I'm dragging to the left the same depth as this. But sometimes it's just easier to draw a rectangle than to object snap track around that corner. So I'm going to go negative 50.8 because I'm going to the left, comma, and I'm going up 12.7. Now I've got that plate, and I'm, I'm not going to see you know, that angle here, it's just going to come, but I do have that little flat landing right here. So I'm going to start by drawing a line and I'm going to start from the back top of this plate. And I'm going to draw this as tall as the quadrant is, which would be the highest point that I have. Then I can come out 25.4 because that's the depth of the cylinder and the plate combined, down the diameter. So what happened with that? 25.4. Now I can come down the diameter. I could also object snap track from this quadrant. And I'm going to go back 12.7 because that's where it meets that plate. That's half of 25.4. And then I'm going to draw this line all the way down, which creates my square landing right here. So does this, does this plane stop right here, this angle plane? It goes up to this tangency. So if I click on this line and I grab this, I could actually drag it and object snap track from that and it will line it up. It'll stretch that line when you grab those blue grips. And I can actually line it up with something else, go back right in alignment with it, 
and now it's lined up. So if I drew a line from this point, just to check myself, it goes right to that endpoint. The other way you could do it is draw a line from the endpoint like this and extend your line up to that point. Escape, I'm trying to hit escape and I'm hitting the wrong button. Okay, I think we have everything drawn that we can see. And now we're going to go to our hidden layer. So order of operations visible. It's King Daddy. It overrides everything else. Hidden lines next. And center lines last. So if we were looking in this front view right here, what would be hidden that we couldn't touch? Well, the back plane, but I can't touch this hole. So if I draw a line with object snap tracking and I go from the eastern quadrant and just acquire that point, drag it down, left click to start, left click to stop. Now I can offset this line to the right the um, diameter of this hole, or I could draw another line down. I could also copy it to the right, the diameter of that hole, or I could copy it from quadrant to quadrant. So let's just use an offset. Now I would, I'm going to zoom way in on this. The object snap gap uh, the line type is way tiny or way large on this, depending on how you look at it. Um, this is, remember, 25 scaled up 25.4. So we don't have any gaps in that yet. And we're going to take care of that all that in a second. So I can offset this. Oh, and the diameter is 19. And I select this line and push it to the right. And now I have my hidden lines for that. Now I just want to look at my layer properties and hidden line is on a hidden line type, which has dashes. So we've got that right. We're going to look at that when we look at our center lines. We may need to change them all. So that's the only thing that I have hidden here. Up in the top view, what can I not touch? I cannot touch this hole. Can I touch the underside of this plane that comes across here? See, we have a plane that goes underneath here. It's like an undercut. So we cannot touch this edge underneath here. The hidden edge underneath here goes from the visible line to the visible line because the visible line overrides it. So I'm going to say line from this endpoint to this endpoint. Now I'm going to draw a line from the western or eastern quadrant and then start drawing it here and here. Line, hover over and grab that diamond, which is your quadrant. Left click to start, left click to stop. Now I can offset, copy, or draw it again. Um, I could also mirror this about this midpoint if I want to because this hole is concentric. So I'm just going to offset. What was the last offset? was 19. And you see that in bird's mouth brackets. So right down here, if you see something saying the same number and you want to use that, you just hit enter to accept it. Select this side and push it to the right and it will offset it like that. Now these two hidden lines can cross because they're on two different planes. I have this underside plane that's hidden that I can touch right here, and then I have this hole that I can touch right here. But they're hidden in this view. Now that I have those and I have my hole drawn here, I have my hole drawn here. I can put, I cannot touch the hole in this side, so I'm gonna draw a line. From the northern quadrant, acquiring that point, left click to start, left click to stop. That hole goes all the way through. Now I can offset that down again. It's 19. Click on the top one, 
push it down and click again. I just hit enter to accept it. Now I, I've got this hole over here and we don't have anything for the fillet because that's smooth, it doesn't have an edge. So this time I'm going to use the first line and I can offset that 19 because it has the same diameter. However, I have to get the position of the first one. It could be the top, which would be the back of the hole back here, the right side, or I could select the bottom, which would be the left side. So I'm going to say I'm going to draw a line. You have to say you're going to draw something first. Now I'll enter. Now it wants the first point, but first I have to tell it that I'm projecting around that corner. So here's my temporary track point right at the top or shift and right click. Temporary track point. Now I'm just going to hover over this to acquire it, drag it out, and you're going to left click to turn. Drag it down, left click to start left click to stop it knows you're only turning one corner so now i can offset this guess how far 19 enter select this line push it to the right and click okay so i'm going to try something in this drawing because all of our lines are coming out with weird line type scale if I want to change all line type scale, I can type in LTS. That is a system variable that will change all the line types to the same scale. So now that I see these hidden lines don't have any breaks, if I made that 25.4, notice that I don't have anything here. So I tried to scale that up. But here's what I found in this drawing. One millimeter is 0 0.04 inches. Because this drawing is not set up to relate that, if I type in LTS here and type in 0 0.04, I zoom in on this. I oh, I've got some. I've got some. And maybe I want to make those larger. So maybe I want to make it 0 0.08. So I just double that factor until I get the line types that I want. LTS. Let's try 0 0.08. Now that didn't do much for me either. Let's see it again. I'm gonna double that, 0.16. They're getting bigger. I'm gonna change this to four. Now, they got way too big. Do you see that? I'm gonna hit Control Z, that undid that. So I was at 0.16, let's try 0.32. That looks better. Now I can see the dashes. So remember I went up to four. That was way huge. 0.32. And if I went to 0.64 LTS. 0.64. So I just double it. Or I go down by 50%. That looks even better. I can now see the breaks from way back here. So the... The line type scale, I typed in LTS and enter 0.64 works pretty good. But now let's see what our center marks do. So line type scale is a big deal, and especially when you're going from millimeters to inches and vice versa. To put in my center lines, I'm going to set my center layer active. 